Hi, Stamping and Crafting friends. Welcome to Melissa's Crafting Treehouse. Today I've got a simple fun fold project that features the Pretty Flowers Embossing Folder and the Plentiful Plants Stamp Set. I'll be showing you three easy ways to highlight the beautiful shapes created by the embossing folder. Plus, you'll learn how to color ribbon and make a beautiful multicolored bow for the front of your card. This is one of three current Stamp Club projects. Stamp Club members get a free class to go every other month complete with project kits in the mail to make two each of three different designs. Club members also get free Stampin' Up! products from me at the end of the club cycle. Plus, you can sign up anytime to join a club. For details about my online Stampers Club program, make sure to check out the link in the video description below. To get started with the card, we're going to simply dry emboss a piece of fresh freesia cardstock using the Pretty Flowers embossing folder. I've sandwiched it between my number three plates and I'm just running it through my Stamped Cut and Emboss machine. Now I've done this several times so that I have a couple of different samples to work with. The first one I'm going to work on is using a sponge dauber with my Fresh Freesia ink pad, so the same color as the cardstock itself. And I'm just going to highlight the dry emboss shapes with the ink. The sponge dauber has a fairly small tip, so it's easy to highlight just the areas that I want. And I'll go back in and highlight certain areas that I want to be darker and lighter. I generally like to do the centers of the flower a little bit darker. And sometimes I'll add a little bit of additional color along the edges to provide a bit of a frame. Now I've applied color to what's considered the embossed side of my piece of cardstock, and that's the side with the larger shapes pushed out. Now I'm turning over my cardstock and I'm going to add color to the back side just to see how that looks and uh, offer a different option. So this is the debossed side. So for this side, the flowers and foliage are pushed down into the paper instead of out. And as you can see, this is just a slightly different look. Now I have another piece of fresh freesia that's dry embossed with that same Pretty Flowers embossing folder. And for this one, I'm also using a sponge dauber, but I'm applying white craft ink instead of the fresh freesia. And I'm applying the white to the debossed side, or the back side, just like the one I did right before this one. Now I've got yet another piece of dry embossed cardstock, and I'm going to come in again with my white craft ink but this time I'm applying the white to the emboss side. So again, the shapes are pushed out towards me so the flowers really stand out. And here is my finished piece and I'm bringing in a piece that hasn't been colored yet just so you can compare how it highlights the dry embossed shapes. Now for this one, I'm going to do one additional step just to show you another alternative look. So I'm going to bring in some clear embossing powder and I'm just going to take my piece and put it into the clear embossing powder. Now the Kraft White ink is a wet sticky ink. It will stay wet for quite some time. So that's what allows me to do this one additional step. And then I'm going to bring in my heat tool and just heat the powder that's sitting on the surface of my cardstock. As the clear embossing powder melts, it will get shiny and change the look of the white. You're going to see that there's a whole lot more texture in the piece now. And some of the clear embossing powder did get onto the plain cardstock as well, which gives you some darker areas of fresh freesia in addition to the heat embossed white craft ink. So here's my finished piece with my white craft and my clear heat embossing and a plain piece of cardstock that's been dry embossed on the left. And now I'm showing you the debossed sides 
the one on the right just has the white craft ink, no clear embossing powder on it. And here are my debossed sides with the white craft ink on the left and the fresh freesia ink on the right. And on the embossed sides, I've got my fresh freesia ink alone on the right, and the one on the left, of course, has the white craft ink with the clear embossing powder added. And now I have to just decide which side to use of these two pieces. That's always the hard part. Next, I'm going to be die cutting some pieces for my sentiment piece. And I'm using the seasonal label dies, which coordinates with the Christmas season stamp set. And I'll be using two of the dies in this set that are designed to nest one on top of the other. So I'm going to be die cutting the small shape with white cardstock and the larger one in mossy meadow. I'm placing a piece of white scrap paper over the cardstock to protect it from some of the texture that um, I have in my number three plate. It's a well used plate, but this is a nice little trick to make sure that that texture doesn't transfer to your paper. And now I'm going to go ahead and stamp a sentiment from the Plentiful Plants stamp set. I've used that thank you image right there with my Blackberry Bliss ink. And I'm just going to go ahead and stamp it on my white die cut piece. And now I'm going to use my Mossy Meadow ink to stamp some images around the thank you to frame it. And I'm going to use first and second inking for this. And I've done two versions of this sentiment piece. Uh, the first with this image here, as you can see, and I've done another one using one of the other foliage images in this set. You'll see that other version in the background shortly. Now to create my ribbon element, I'm going to be using some of the Fresh Freesia Open Weave Ribbon. And I'm going to start with taking my scissors and bisecting it down the middle to give me two pieces instead of one. Now I'm going to leave one half as is and for the other half I'm going to pull in my dark Highland Heather blends alcohol marker and I'm just going to add a little additional color to it. And when I do this I like to use the fat end of my marker and use the side edge of it, not the tip. Your tip will fray if you're too rough with your marker, so using the side of the marker will help. So now I've got two tones of purple there, one in the Highland Heather and one in the original Fresh Freesia color. And now I'm going to bring in a third ribbon my white crinkled seam binding and on this one I'm going to color it with my light Blackberry Bliss blends alcohol marker. Now you can also create a bit of an ombre effect by using the light and the dark. For this one I'm just going to use the light Blackberry Bliss blends alcohol marker all along the piece and then I'll add a little bit more along the edge for a darker edge. If you want the ombre to be more dramatic, just pull in your dark Blackberry Bliss blends alcohol marker and add some of that color too. In that case, you might need to blend the two colors just like you would if you were applying these markers on cardstock. Now I'm going to stack these three ribbons one on top of each other and tie a bow. And to make that process just a little bit easier, I've taken binder clips and uh, clipped them together at the ends. Now here I'm just making sure that my ribbons are all layered one on top of each, of each other. And then I'm pinching it between my fingers, pulling it really tight so that the layers stay on top of each other before I do the next step, which is to use my fingers to make two 
loops or ears and you can see the whole time I'm holding it really tight to make sure that those ribbons stay positioned right one on top of the other. By doing this the loops are just sort of more in control so that when you do this next step it allows you to tie the bow much more easily. So I'm going to fold one of the ears on top of the other and the bigger your ears the easier this step is. I'm just pushing that one ear into the opening and creating my bow. Now it's loose right here and to adjust the shapes of my ears and finish tying the bow I'm grabbing some plain pencils putting them into the ears and then I can tighten the knot and then pull the tails to make the ears a little bit smaller or whatever size I want them to be and then adjust the shape of the bow as I see fit. And then I'll go ahead and fan out the three different pieces of each of the ears and shape the bow as I like. So now I've finished creating pretty much all of the pieces and parts I need for this card. So I'm going to begin with the final assembly. We're starting with a piece of Mossy Meadow cardstock. That's just a quarter sheet of cardstock that measures four and a quarter by five and a half. My card opening is a piece of Rich Razzleberry cardstock that measures three and three quarters by 11 inches and it's folded in half. And then I've got adhesive on the back side of that piece and it's just going to get mounted right onto the Mossy Meadow base. And now I'm just going to attach my Blackberry Bliss layer, which again has adhesive on the back already. And then I just need to decide which of my dry embossed pieces I'm going to use. And for this one, I'm going to use the embossed side with the Fresh Freesia ink. Now after I assembled this piece, I noticed that the pieces are slightly off in length at the bottom. So off camera, I've taken that to my trimmer and just trimmed off the bottom so it's even. And now I'm going to go ahead and assemble my sentiment piece. And for this one, I put dimensionals on the back side of the white piece and then attached the Mossy Meadow layer with glue dots to the front of the card. And I'll be using a glue dot in behind the knot of my bow to attach it to the front of the card and I'll just be placing it just at the bottom of the Mossy Meadow layer at the bottom of the sentiment element. And there's my finished card. As a reminder, this is one of three of the current Stampers Club projects. If you'd like to receive free classes to go in the mail, plus free Stampin' Up! products, you may want to join my online Stampers Club. To learn more, click on the little i in the upper right hand corner of your screen, or click on the link in the video description below. I hope you enjoyed my project today, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with friends, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks for spending some time with me today, and happy crafting!